No offense, but you look like you've traveled a long way down some bad roads. Where'd you come from? Wow, you have come a long way then. I've never been there, but I've met some traders who passed that way. Well, welcome then. I'm Veronica. I live in a hole in the ground. Well, a bunker, if you want to get technical. I think it sounds more interesting my way. But I'm not there much anymore. I'm usually out here picking up food and supplies for my family. Whatever they need. Yeah, I'm not worried. They can handle themselves. But somebody has to get the groceries, know what I mean? And actually these days, I think they'd rather have me out here anyway. But that's a whole other story. So listen, can I ask you something on the level? I had a run-in with this group calling themselves the Brotherhood of Steel. Pretty strange bunch. Do you know anything about them? Well, that shouldn't be a problem for me. I can't afford anything like that. Hey, so where are you headed anyway? Ooh, very exciting. Gonna strike it rich, huh? I'll be honest. You're the first person I've run across out here that looks like he can really handle himself. There are places I've never been to that'd be too dangerous for just me. What do you think? Maybe we could travel together, help each other out. Hmm. Good. That's the look I was going for. Trust me on this one, though. You'll be glad you brought me along. If I turn out to be a burden, we can part ways at any time. No hard feelings. Oh, nowhere in particular, really. Just hoping to see more of the world, looking for a fresh perspective. I want to see how different groups have adapted to survive in the Mojave. See if there's something I can learn from. Like I said, they can handle themselves. And I'm not the only one getting supplies for them. It's a big family. Now you're talking. One thing you should know first, though. I ask you about the Brotherhood because I'm one of them. I know, I know, but I had to know how you react when I told you. We have made a lot of enemies. You still okay bringing me along? I'm great at punching people. I'm not gonna lie. It's a gift. Well, thanks for taking a chance on a naive young girl from California with stars in her eyes and a pneumatic gauntlet on her hand. Let's hit the road, huh? What'd you think of Mr. House? I was surprised he only had the two robot sex slaves. I like long walks in the desert and candlelit metal workshops. I like punching things, but sometimes shooting things just has to do. Yeah, I've been taking things apart and putting them back together since before I said my first word. You want to build something? Talk to me, and we can do it right there on the spot. Workbenches are from novices. Who knows? I might even be able to show you a Brotherhood trick or two. My favorite subject. I want... A dress. Yeah, a good one. Something elegant and classy, you know? But still stylish. Something that's eye-catching and sexy, but also says, don't fuck with me. I keep hoping I'll come across some old world designer gown when I'm scavenging, but it never happens. Maybe I should move back to California. Hey, you try getting a date wearing scribe robes. Might as well be wearing sweatpants. I just like them, you know? They make you feel like a woman. Those ladies before the war, they knew what they were doing. Can I make it up? I would say he was my tutor, but that doesn't cover it. After my parents passed, he looked after me. The whole brotherhood brought me up, really, but he made sure of it. I never had a grandfather, not that I knew, anyway. But Elijah was in some ways what I'd imagined a grandfather to be. It was by his request, actually. He cleared it with the other elders somehow. They sent him to look into the dam. There was a time when I'd have begged to follow, watch him at work. He did. For years, he fought with the council, taught me to question our direction. Meanwhile, he'd become more out of touch than all of them. On our way east, he demanded we stop at Helios 1 to examine it. While we were there, we received word that the NCR had taken the dam. He was furious called it children playing with a bomb, but he was mad because we'd lost his power. What we'd use it for? He didn't even care. They're cautious. When they discover something, they respect it, learn its limits, consider how to preserve it. Used to drive Father Elijah crazy. 
He liked to learn limits too, but only so he could push them. That's not to excuse the other elders though. They all covet technology for its own sake. Some are just more fanatical than others. Yeah, I did. I couldn't help him. He just didn't listen. And the idea that people talk back to him. <sighs> if he could have made the Brotherhood act like machines, ordering them around with the push of a button, he would have. Elijah could look at an old device and immediately understand what made it work. And he could see its potential, where it fit with other technology. It's not something he could teach, but he tried with me. Some of it stuck. But that's what he taught me. You ask what I learned from him. I learned what I don't want to become. In the end, it was just him and his vision. Nothing and no one else. Yeah, I miss him. Like what? Just my parents, but they haven't been around for a long time. Dad was a paladin, Mom was a scribe. They died in the same battle, trying to hold off the NCR from... something. I don't remember what it was. Guess it seemed important at the time. Like what? Ever been nosy? I was, once. We were pretty young, but I like to think it was love. She left the Brotherhood, wanted to put some distance between herself and her parents. Since our membership isn't open to outsiders, some members think that obligates all of us to procreate. You can guess which camp her parents belong to. No, couldn't bring myself to leave everyone else behind. Couldn't convince her to stay either. I'd hoped love would be enough to influence her decision, but it wasn't. We were both too stubborn. I don't know where she is now, but I'm sure she's moved on. I still think about her though, once in a while. Ooh, got any juicy gossip? If you take trying to keep me as far away from Hidden Valley as possible because I ask too many difficult questions as a sign of respect, oh yeah. That's not to say I don't get along with them. I just think they don't know what to do with me sometimes. Let's. Hi there. My name is April Mortimer. I monitored a communication earlier between you and someone with the Brotherhood of Steel. I'm with the followers of the Apocalypse. We're much more liberal about the sharing of technology than those Brotherhood people. Bring your robot to us. We'll see that whatever information it may have on it is used for the greater good. Listen up. I'm in charge of security around here. And I can't say I'm too happy about having an outsider waltzing around. But since you came in with Veronica, I'm inclined to cut you a little slack. Just behave yourself, and we won't have any problems, okay? Oh, and the Elder's going to want to talk to you. He's on the second level. Just take a right once you get down there. My office is right here in case you need anything. Just ask for Ramos. Oh, hey there. Something I can help you with? That's right. Nothing gets in or out of here without me knowing it. Under the lockdown, only essential personnel are permitted to enter or leave. That includes supply runners and high security patrols. All other personnel are forbidden to leave, and any personnel that were out there when the lockdown was enacted are forbidden from returning. Fine by me? Bye. Yeah? It's our virtual reality training hall. We don't really go out all that often anymore, so this is how we stay sharp. Yeah, a lot more. Back when we were at the Helio station. Oh, crap. I'm pretty sure I'm not supposed to talk about that, especially with outsiders. So forget you just heard that, okay? Head scribe Taggart quickly realized my extraordinary talent when I took the mandatory VR combat testing. Soon after that, he requested that I get transferred to VR specialist training, serving as his assistant. I miss hanging out with the other students all the time, but at least I get to skip all those boring lectures. Well, like just about everyone else here, I grew up in the Brotherhood. My father was a scribe and my mother a paladin. They both died at Helios 1. The others were always like a family to me before that, but afterward they became my family in truth. I don't know. I'm a little like both of them, I guess. If I had to choose, I really don't know which I'd pick. 
That's a question I've been asked a lot lately, since it's something I have to decide for myself soon. I'm currently an apprentice in the Brotherhood, and recently became eligible for journeyman status. But first, I have to decide which order I want to join. The Knights or the Scribes? Knights are in charge of all of our equipment. Power armor, Gatling lasers, you name it. All of it built and maintained by Knights. Knights also get to go out on patrols, scouting assignments, and support the Paladins in offensive operations. Being a Knight would mean getting to see more of the world, fight the Brotherhood's enemies, and possibly someday become a Paladin like my mother. The Scribes are responsible for discovering how all the old tech we recover actually works, and sometimes even work on inventing new things. Without them, the Brotherhood could never fulfill its mission. Or at least that's what my dad always used to say. Bye. Hello, you must be the outsider everyone's talking about. I'm Linda Schuller. If you ever need medical attention, this is the place to come. Yes, I handle all medical needs in the bunker. If you're ever wounded, I can treat you. For a fee. Normally I'd just be the base's medical officer. But my other duties say otherwise. We have equipment here to treat most physical injuries. Lacerations, broken bones, that sort of thing. We also carry a full supply of antitoxins. You may have noticed the bark scorpions up above. Though tiny, their venom packs quite a punch. Treating scorpion stings is my most common procedure. I can also treat any form of radiation sickness you pick up out in the waste. No matter what stage. Save the last. I'm this bunker's head scribe in everything but name. I supervise the research teams. I collate the reports. I attend the meetings. But for reasons beyond me, that buffoon Taggart still gets the title. And don't get me started on that little pet of his. Everyone around here knows what's going on there but her. Oh, I tried. The Elder listened patiently to my carefully constructed argument regarding why the buffoon should lose his position. Then he just as patiently explained to me that Taggart's work was vital to our cause, and that he wasn't to be trifled with lesser matters. But vital to our cause? Hardly. I suppose I have a few things around that I can spare. Thanks. Later. You must be the stranger I've been hearing about. Sorry, but I'm strictly forbidden from offering our tech to outsiders like yourself. Besides, I'm a little busy right now. You're the one with that robot. I was hoping you'd bring him my way. Pretty impressive piece of hardware. I can't say that I've seen anything quite like him before. Really? What kind of logs? What kind of data does he have on it? Did you say Poseidon energy? I've been researching some Poseidon projects here. Do you think you could leave your robot with me for a few days? I have some materials that I can use to upgrade his armor while he's here. Yes, what is it? Ah, the outsider. I suppose it's too much to ask that jarhead Ramos to keep outsiders away from my research. I am head scribe Taggart, and I am much too busy to deal with the likes of you right now. When Paladin Ramos informed me that Veronica was approaching with an outsider in tow, at first I didn't know what to think. After giving the matter some thought, however, I've decided that an outsider could be of use to me right now. However, I will not force you to help us. Should you refuse, you will be allowed to leave here. Though you'd remain Veronica's responsibility. What do you say, outsider? Are you willing to help us? Then allow me to explain our situation. This bunker is currently locked down, allowing no entry or exit, with you being one of the few exceptions. In exceptional cases, teams are sent out to investigate sites or retrieve materials deemed too important to ignore. Three such teams have gone missing recently and the news of their disappearance has not yet been widely spread to avoid undue concern. In order to maintain the peace and adhere to the strictures of the lockdown, I need to send someone else to discover what happened to them. I'm glad I can count on you. 
Oh, and one other thing. The patrols each had a holotape detailing their missions that you can use to track them. The shielding of the bunker prevents us from actively tracking them, but their positions should show up on your map once you get to the surface. Should our worst fears become realized, please bring back all three of the holotapes from the patrols. Otherwise, bring our brothers home. I've given the order that you be given access to some of the equipment our scouts and patrols have scavenged over the years. You won't be allowed to purchase any prohibited equipment, but hopefully some of what's available will prove useful to you. Found the missing patrols, or was something else on your mind? While that is disheartening news, there remains hope that the other two patrols may still be found alive. See me as soon as you found them. Found the missing patrols, or... I can spare a little time. What did you want to talk about? It's a protective measure that was enacted after our defeat at Helios. The NCR was hot on our heels, and we wouldn't have survived another encounter. It was decided that we would stay quiet for a time, heal the wounded, and try to come up with a new strategy. However, after we had fully recuperated, our first scouting measures showed that the NCR's presence in this region had only increased in our absence. There are now more than five times the number of NCR troops in the area as when we fought them, and we have half the number we did at Helios. And so the lockdown has been extended. To go outside would be the death of us all. We have some personnel that are allowed to travel on the surface. They trade for what we need and occasionally drop off what they acquire. We make sure that they only enter or leave the bunker while the sandstorm is active, to avoid detection. That is this base's defensive system. It serves as camouflage and masks all entry and exit from the bunker. We use it to hide our patrols and supply runners, though we still send such out at night to be extra safe. Bye. So, you're the outsider that's been given leave to wander around freely. Desperate times call for desperate measures, I guess. Name's Harden. I'm the head paladin of this chapter. I think we might be able to help each other out. I don't know what the Elder talked to you about, but I can tell you this chapter is in trouble. And he's at the center of it. Are you willing to listen to what I have to say? As you may have already heard, this entire base is under a state of lockdown. No one goes out except small patrols at night. Most of the chapter has been sealed in here for years. And those few who are outside when the lockdown was initiated are forbidden from returning. Morale has plummeted as time has gone by, and many of our current paladins haven't seen combat outside of training simulations, and all because of the Elder's explicit order that no one be allowed in or out. The only way things will change is if a new Elder is installed. I don't know. I've gone through our records dozens of times looking for a precedent regarding the dismissal of an Elder and come up with nothing. The people who are most likely to know how it could be done are also some of McNamara's strongest supporters. So they refuse to help me, which is why we're having this conversation. An outsider such as yourself would arouse less suspicion asking questions about such matters. The fact that the Elder has some tasks for you means his faithful won't suspect you, and you have a line open to the man himself. In short, you're in a perfect position to help me. Will you at least think about it? That'll have to do. I'd recommend going to see Ramos first. As head of security, he's more familiar with our protocols than anyone else here. You could also try to find something relevant in our data store, though last I heard Scribe Ibsen is having a bit of a problem accessing it. And if McNamara should give you any tasks, I'd ask that you kept me abreast of them. Report anything you find to me, and we'll move from there. What is it, Outsider? Have you discovered anything? If you must. It's a travesty is what it is. Every second we sit on our hands down here is another second that we're not fulfilling our sworn duty. It's not that I dislike the Elder, but I strongly disapprove of his current style of leadership. We're safe, yes, but at what cost? After lifting the lockdown, the first thing I'd do is send scouts out to recon the area. We need to know what's going on out there. Next. I'd resume patrols in the near vicinity, and begin sending search teams out to the spots the scouts reported were relatively safe. It's standard procedure when a chapter relocates to an area. 
But standard procedure wasn't our last elder style, either. Elijah was a strange one. His even becoming elder was highly questionable, seeing as how he was a scribe. Typically, only paladins are eligible. But an exception was made in his case on account of him being a genius. Unfortunately, whatever scientific acumen he had didn't extend to tactics. Trying to defend Helios was a blunder of the worst kind, and many brothers lost their lives because of it. Many of the senior paladins, myself included, advised him to fight a retreating action, but he refused to budge. Said he almost had it working. We never did find out exactly what he was talking about. When the perimeter was finally overrun, the Elder had simply vanished. Helios was the worst goddamn action I've seen in a long, long career of fighting. Yes, I know the loss of the patrols has weighed heavily on his mind for some time. He took it very personally when they first went missing. That was when I first began to seriously question his ability to lead us. A commander has to be able to deal with the potential loss of his men. It's strange that he would ask you to find mission disks on them, however. The missing paladins were all on standard patrols, which don't need them. Only brothers sent on special assignments are given mission disks. If you should find any on the lost patrols, let me know. Bye. Look, this isn't a great time. Oh, what the hell? It's not like we're making any progress. I'm Ibsen, and I hope your day is going better than mine is. Yeah, I'm in charge of keeping this data system up and running, but accessing it is a little, uh, touch and go at the moment. One of our exploratory patrols, back when we had exploratory patrols, found a data disk in some ruins out in the waste. Well, we finally got around to cataloging the damn thing and got shut out of our own data store the second it loaded. Turns out it had a virus on it. Oh, there are patrols, just not exploratory ones. We've been in a state of lockdown for, well, let's just say it's been a while. The only time anyone gets to go topside is guard duty, or to gather provisions. Other than that, it's steel walls and fluorescent lights for us. Nah, it's not so bad. The world outside isn't exactly a paradise, you know? Still, you can only breathe recirculated air for so long. We've got more than a few people in here who are going a little stir-crazy. I don't have time to think about silly things like politics right now. My main concern right now is getting this blasted data store up and running. Oh, all kinds of things. There was already information regarding the layout and systems of this bunker, but we've since added our own data as well. Prior to the lockdown, we had extensively scouted the surrounding area and compiled dossiers on nearby points of interest. Yes, did you have an idea that might help us? What? No, that... that's brilliant! It would let us seal a portion of the virus to a particular terminal, even when the other parts move. Best of luck to you. I'll tell the others to take a break so they don't get in your way. Oh, and I'll keep track of when it jumps for you. To maximize your chances, wait for my signal before you begin. How may I assist you? Our instruments show some impressive power fluctuations coming from across the river. What's going on over there? The virus just jumped. Find which terminals it went. Terrace has been purged. You actually did it? If you don't mind my saying so, I didn't think you had a chance in hell of pulling it off. But I'm glad to be wrong for once. Thank you, my friend. Please feel free to access the data store at your leisure. I'm only allowed to give you access to non-classified topics, but it's better than nothing, right? I can understand how the man might be frustrated by the current situation. He's a take-charge sort of fellow. Standing around's not his strong suit. I myself often wish we could end this interminable stasis and begin moving forward again. Well, you'd have to get a senior level member of the chapter to unlock a topic for you. I've given you access to what I can, but that's not much. The majority of topics fall under Ramos's aegis, since they'd constitute a security risk. Good luck getting anything out of him. You might have better luck with another member of the senior staff. Try talking to them about it. Bye. Your presence here... Let's just say it's highly irregular. Outsiders aren't even allowed to know that our bunker's here, let alone come and go freely. You impressed Elder McNamara, obviously. He must believe that you'd be very useful. 
So, you've been talking to Harden, eh? He's been looking for a way to usurp McNamara ever since the lockdown started. Don't get me wrong, he's a good man. But Elder McNamara has done all right by us. If it weren't for him, none of us would have survived at Helios. I'll tell you what I told Harden. There have been only a few cases of elders being dismissed from their posts in the Brotherhood's history. And those involve crimes that someone like Elder McNamara is just not capable of. You can look it up for yourself if you want. I'll grant you access to that portion of the history section of our data store. See Senior Scribe Ibsen about accessing it. I'm sure someone's told you all this before. Several years back, we were running our chapter out the Helios One solar power station. Our elder at the time, Elijah, had some kind of obsession with the place, which is the only reason we stayed as long as we did. That place was hardly defensible, and we knew the NCR was moving in on us, but the elder refused to budge, insisting that he just needed more time. We never found out what he needed time for. Wave upon wave of NCR troopers hit us from all directions. We held out for a time, but we were grossly outnumbered, and they had more men than we had ammo. Eventually, our positions collapsed. Elder Elijah was nowhere to be found, so McNamara took charge and led what remained of us on a counteroffensive west. We lost a lot of men and women, but we broke through and made it here. Make no mistake, McNamara saved this chapter that day. Who was Elijah more like? He was our elder before McNamara. Bright guy, but just between you and me, he was a little off. Our mission is to recover and preserve the technology of the past, but Elijah wanted more. He sought ways to improve upon technology, make it better. When we found Helios One, he was like a kid in a candy store, he kept talking about the potential and a grand design never realized. He even insisted we set up our base there, against the objection of nearly every paladin. What followed is a whole other story. Later. Beats wait until they shoot. Hold it right there. Don't you move. How the hell did you survive that bombardment? But I had you zeroed in the whole time. Nobody's that fast. Move a muscle now and I'll blow you to pieces. Then just... just stay where you are. Raquel will be here any second. I'll take this from here. I'm Raquel, Master at Arms for the Nellis Homeland. Mother Pearl, our eldest, wishes to speak to you. Follow close, and mind your behavior. Welcome, child. Took your sweet time getting here, didn't you? I've been waiting a good five years for an outsider to come along and visit. Oh, so many ways. Small ones to begin with, so we can get used to what it's like to have a sev... Uh, outsider around and about. Should that go well, it may be you can help in big ways, too. We'll have to see. You have to keep in mind that you're our first contact with the outside world since I was barely a woman. Seclusion has kept us safe, but the world around us is changing. Neon lights in the distance, patrolling robots, soldiers. My youngers think our guns can keep out the world. But I think we need to let it in, just a little. 
or become its victim. You're that little bit of the world, child. Welcome to Nellis. You picked a good time to stop by, for we're swimming in problems. My youngers can tell you all about it. Raquel could use help with the bug problem. Doc Argyle has wounded he's tending to. And Loyal and Jack might be looking for help with some repairs. Or you could just go see Pete at the museum and hear the story of our people. All you have to do there is listen. Come and go as you like, help or don't help, I leave it up to you. But I hope you'll show my youngers that not every outsider needs to be blown up. Watch your step, sister. Watch your step, sister. How is your visit with us going, stranger? They are too rare and valuable to simply give away. Nor have you proven yourself a friend. Each of the elders would appreciate assistance with various issues here in Nellis. Seek out Jack, Loyal, Raquel, and Argyle. They will guide you. I haven't heard anything. You must not be trying hard enough. Later.